teenager, racially harassed. It is extreme. Officials do nothing. They are now suing. Put up the picture for a mask. We said this needed to happen on day one. Last week, the Detroit News sat down with 17 year old Clara Malik and her parents, Rob and April, for an interview to share her experience while attending Crosswell Lexington High School in Michigan, Crosswell, Michigan. This was back in 2021. She is speaking out about more than two years later, uh, about two years following a federal racial discrimination lawsuit filed against the school. So the teenager who was adopted, uh, she said she was repeatedly called the N-word by her white classmates. They taunted her. Her suit reports, Claire was one of three black students in a district of more than 2,000 students. The teenager said white students would often, quote, call me, call me the N-word or say the N-word in a sentence. And they'll look at me for a reaction, you know, kind of like what grown people do today. Uh, Clara added that she did not know how to react at first. That while she heard the word before, she had never been called it. Eventually, she would laugh alone. What else are you supposed to do? Like, the jokes aren't funny, but you're just like, Everybody else is laughing, so you got to laugh too, end quote. So sad. The, according to the lawsuit, Mal- Malik was taunted by white students on a nearly daily basis with racial slurs and threats, pulling out a hair. Students taunted the child with phrases like, go back to the plantation and pick cotton. And Your hair looks like ish, end quote. The lawsuit also alleges an incident where Clara told the students to stop using the N word and was blatantly ignored. One student responded, free speech N word. The complaint says, just days later, the lawsuit claims Clara was told all the N words will be shot after school today at 3 p.m. A teacher was scheduled to protect Clara by walking her to her class following the threat, but was heard saying Clara was playing the race card. And which is what blacks do. The teacher also allegedly said the teen deserved what she got. The racial abuse prompted her father, Rob, to plead with the school for them to step in. However, the alleged abuse continued. And more faculty members also displayed racist behavior. Let me explain what's happening right now in the narrative. It doesn't matter what your rules say. It does not matter what the policy says. Culture will eat policy alive every day of the week, 24 hours a day. They are affixed to a common culture. Policy be damned. Naturally, there are rules against bullying. There is a penalty against or for profanity and racist language. All of this is codified in the school discipline book. They did not follow it because their culture trumped all. Put up the picture. So the family actually filed a discrimination complaint with the Michigan Department of Civil Rights on November 12th, 2021, noting the racial discrimination Claire faced by both the faculty and students and the hostile environment she endured, including one student wearing a Confederate flag to school and not being disciplined at all. The second, the school board then passed a resolution to quote, reaffirm the commitment to its existing anti-discrimination policy. What? The school board reaffirmed its commitment. Yes. Now we we've reaffirmed it now. That should that should do it. Uh, but it was ineffective. Claire reports that days after that meeting, she was told by a white student, I hate all you black B words. After the student threatened Claire by aiming a slingshot with scissors at her head and said he was going to cut her with a knife. The Malik's filed a police report. Now you, you hear in the lawsuit, in the filing, I'm quoting what the students allegedly said, but I want you to understand the spirit behind it. The students 
are typically saying what their parents have allowed them to say at home or what the parents themselves are saying at home. You have to be careful what you say around your children because while they may not always be listening, they are always learning. They are always learning. Put them up. The family filed a suit, a lawsuit against the school district in May of 2022, as well as the Crosswell Lexington Board of Education. Principal Kyle Wood on the left and the superintendent of schools, Dan Gilbertson on the right, after the school failed to stop the abuse. The bullying caused Clara to say she wished she was white. And she was diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and PTSD as if she had been to war. Clara told her parents that she cannot handle the harassment any longer. And she took classes virtually before her parents took her out of the school permanently in the spring of 2022. The lawsuit also notes that the school's deliberate indifference to the racial harassment and bullying also caused Claire's parents to experience extreme emotional and mental distress and deprived them of their right to control their daughter's education. They're asking for compensatory economic and non-economic damages, exemplary damages, punitive damages, and court cost. It's unfortunate that civil courts have to be utilized to enforce what should be normative rules as it relates to the care of our children. We all agree that bullying has no place regardless of its context. But it seems as if racism, when there's a racial dynamic, it becomes negotiable. How many times have we been here where a student has said they keep bullying me, but if the bullying comes in form of racism, somehow it's much more tolerated than other forms of bullying. This is the way to enforce your rights, utilizing the courts. All right, fair thoughts here. Well, first of all, I'm pretty sure Nikki Haley told us that this is not a racist country. That's correct. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how this could happen in not a racist country, but you bring up a, an amazing point that I feel needs to be reiterated here. These students, they learned this behavior from somewhere. You know, this is either coming from the home, they're comfortable enough that they hear maybe their parents say it, perhaps it's the grandparents, whoever. But this, this, you know, this is the indoctrination. This is a learned behavior that these students are taking with them. And it's a learned behavior that they will eventually attempt to pass on to their kids, whether they mean to or not. And so that is one of the most disgusting parts. And that is how racism continues to live here in the United States. And it's also worth pointing out that clearly this family didn't want to sue. This is yeah. not what they wanted. They tried multiple times to get the school to enforce their own policies and just protect their daughter. And the school failed and failed and failed. And just like we've seen so many times, it doesn't matter if it's you know a, a case like this. It doesn't matter if it's a, a a pharmaceutical lawsuit or you know anything like that, an environmental lawsuit. The institutions that are there to protect us fail. The institutions that are supposed to be the ones that handle these problems, that punish the bad people, they don't do it. So it has to be done to civil court. You know, the, the only thing they end up responding to is losing money. It doesn't matter again if it's a CEO, if it's a school district, if it's a police department. The institutions are supposed to handle it, but across the board, top to bottom, they fail us. And so we have to rely on plaintiff's lawyers to come in yep. and, and do the work that the government, again, from local to state to federal level, should be doing, but they're not. And the plaintiff's lawyers is some of the biggest. And, and admittedly, look, I work and have worked at a plaintiff's law firm for 20 years, so I'm a little biased, but they're the real unsung heroes yep. that actually are, are, are helping everyone in this country because nobody else is doing it. Yeah, well said. Very well said. We will update the story as it develops.